Hey guys, it's Kaz here and today I'm doing my November wrap up. So in November it was really not a good reading month for me. I mean technically I read six things which is a good amount of books. But on the flip side I was just not about that reading life. Literally like over 20 days in I'd only finished two books and one of them was a reread. And um, two of the books ran into this month as well but I've put them in here because I started them in November. So yeah it was just not a time for me. But yes, hopefully I'm out of that like, it wasn't a proper slump, it was really weird because at one point I was reading like four different books, I just kept picking up different books because I just wasn't feeling anything. But yes, let's just get into all of these books now. So the first thing I read was The Light Thieves by Helena Duggan. This is a middle grade, it's the start of a series and I really enjoyed it. It was really interesting, it's like a mystery, there's also a lot of like real life stuff in here but as not a real life so basically there's like a billionaire that owns everything and is trying to do stuff and it just felt like some kids reading this might not get the uh the connections there but some adults that are reading this will be like hmm i see where you're coming from so yeah i really enjoyed it there were things that were wrapped up in here there was also a lot of questions still so it's definitely one that i'm gonna continue on this only just came out so it's gonna be a while, a while until the next book but yeah basically this follows this one boy and his sister goes missing because she's going to this city basically the billionaire has created a city because the world has tilted offside like the world's like this and it's tilted wrong so Apparently if if loads of people go to this city, there'll be enough people there and it will tilt the world back into the right position is what's going on and His sister goes without any permission for anyone and then he wants to go and find her and then his granddad ends up missing as well There's these weird people with hoods following him and trying to Get him and you don't know what the crap's going on and then from there he meets these other two characters who become his friends and they all have to go on this mission to try and figure out what's going on try and save his sister and his grandparent and try and figure out who these weird hooded things are and whether this billionaire guy is what he seems is he a good guy is he a bad guy is he hiding anything is he not hiding anything so yeah i really enjoyed this one it was a good time so if you want another middle grade series to start i recommend this one it's a good after that I read The Demon World by Sally Green and then a bit later in the month I read The Burning Kingdoms by Sally Green so I'm just going to talk about both of them now because this is the second and third book in the Smoke Thieves trilogy. The second one was a reread and then I reread that so I could figure out what the crap was going on in the last one. So this one it was all right for me it's like a, a solid 3.5 series it's not the best. I feel like on the reread of the book one and book two, I read book one the previous months, I didn't enjoy it as much, which is unfortunate because a lot of the time you reread a book, you're like, oh yeah, I remember this and it's fun and you get to enjoy it again. But I felt like the characters weren't as good as I remember them and the story wasn't as good as I remember it. So that's very unfortunate. It also is probably because I love the Half Bad trilogy so much. And when I reread that, I loved it even more and it was amazing. So yeah. Unfortunately for me, this one didn't hold up to the reread. I enjoyed it. It was fine. I liked the characters, but they're not the best. I enjoyed the plot, but it was also just not not giving me what I want. So basically in here, it's it's a war. So there's the the evil king dude who wants to go to war with the other country because he wants to take over the power and everything. And we follow five different characters or POV characters and they're all come together in the first book and then throughout the next two, which are these two, stuff happens. A lot of war stuff happens and also demons, uh, demons exist and the smokes from demons when you kill them, smoke comes out of the mouth and you collect that and well, people have only ever seen red smoke before and that is like a drug that people will get, have a little sip of red smoke and get a bit delirious. But then purple smoke is found in the first book and it's found that if you are a child and you take the purple smoke you become really powerful and strong and you can heal so yeah from there stuff happens i feel like it'll be a bit spoilery if i start talking about stuff and things and that but yeah that's the main premise there's the demon smoke and then there's 
the, the war and then it like comes together and all that jazz but yeah it was fine it was not the best moving on um that's halfway through so uh yeah let's just head on over to a message from one of the spawns and i shall be back with the last three books hey look at your disgusting face this all this neck is the aftermath of the catnip you slimy slimy boy you're an absolute mess you so after that i read from hell by <coughs> by Alan Moore and Eddie Campbell. This is a Chat the Ripper retelling. Obviously it does follow like the actual murders and stuff but they give Jack the Ripper a identity and then there's loads of stuff going on. Um, yeah, was not a fan unfortunately. Maybe this is also why I was just, November was just not the one for me. Um, but yeah, so Basically, there's a lot of stuff going on in here about Freemasonry, about um, cults, and oh my god, it was so fucking boring to read. Like, the first two chapters in here, because this was originally done serialised, like, a chapter each week or month or whatever. Um, I don't know how anybody got into the story, because the first two chapters were fucking a slog, let me tell you. So... First of all, the artwork's not even, not the best. It's just, it's fine, but also, like, all the characters look the same. And there are loads of characters, so you're just like, oh, look, it's Victorian Man number three that looks exactly the same as Victorian Man number two and number seven. And, like, I think none of the characters are distinct because of the artwork style. But also, as you can see, there's, like, quite a lot of words and stuff. And, ugh, so... The first two chapters, like I said, were a slog because it's all about this flipping the dude that is Jack the Ripper and basically one of the girls has a secret baby with the Prince of England and then the doctor has been told to go and kill the girl and all of her friends because they were trying to blackmail to get some money out of him and that's the premise of why Jack the Ripper existed and then he's doing it all like in a really culty way he's doing all these taking bits out of them and that because freemasonry and cults and stuff so the first two chapters fucking boring and then the third one the women finally arrive and i was like oh okay i'm actually enjoying the story now and then the chapter after that it was him being fucking boring again so basically whenever we followed jack the ripper it was just like so Ugh. it was just going just going in my eyes and just floating out of my brain because it was just so many words i didn't care about so for example there's a whole chapter where it's just him and this dude who drives the coach for him because obviously he's a fancy upper class man so he's got a coach driver just going around the streets of London and he's just talking about all these different things and statues and and what significance they have within his weird creepy demonic religion and oh honestly it got to the point when I just started skipping it a little bit. So let me just try and give you an example because I just flicked open to here and um, see if this is interesting. I'll read this and see if you are interested. If you'd a mason bee first learned their law, their history, oh, do not look alarmed, so little's known about their past. The lesson's short, learned easily. Freemasons claim descent from variously Atlantis, Eden, and no doubt primordial chaos itself, hogwash. The orders, as it stands, goes back no further than the 18th century. Formerly, a humble craftsman guild, an influx of aristocrats and intellectuals seeking arcane thrills, joined bringing handshakes, rituals, and oaths, meaningless occult veneers. That's just one. That's just one panel. And it just keeps pointing at different bits in London and telling you what it means and stuff. And then there's Hawksmoor, Cunning Nick, who never became a knight, yet was the greatest of them all, Hawksmoor. That vast, dark, intricate cathedral mind whose bird shit collared stones defined the century. Yet who allowed the world to see him as Wren's underling, and with a passion sought obscurity? Stop here by St George's Bloomsbury, his church. Do you want to hear about the church? Because I fucking don't. It's just so boring, like, this is the next bit. 
after what I just said, this is him talking about the church. All of this, 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 all of this. Shut up! Just shut up. Yeah, it was really fucking boring when it was talking about him. When it got into the actual, like, <laughs> uh, a bad phrase, but like the, the meat and bones of it. Obviously people getting murdered. I, I enjoyed it more, but I couldn't say I enjoyed this story because every time it got good, it would go on to these really fucking boring old men, old rich men, and I didn't care anymore again. <sighs> so yes, that was From Hell. That was my experience with From Hell. Very unfortunate. It was just not not the best for me, not good. I did think that the artwork worked in one sense though. I think that when it was showing like all the murders obviously, if it was in colour, there'd just be blood and red everywhere. It would like be gratuitous and take away from what's happening. I feel like the black and white worked in that way that it didn't overpower like seeing what was happening and seeing these women getting murdered, if that makes sense. So in that sense, I thought it worked, but everything else, as you can tell, not the best. And then after that, I read The Scorpio Races by Maggie Sivato, which I gave five stars and I really enjoyed and I'm so glad that I enjoyed a book after that absolute tripe. Yeah, The Scorpio Races, this is a standalone and honestly I didn't know anything about it other than like there's a horse and races because that's what it says on the front. And that is pretty much what it's about as well. So, there's apparently this myth, legend, lore thing in a lot of different cultures where horses come out of the ocean and there's different like mythology and behind it. And then Maggie Seaver took that and sort of twisted it and made it her own. And yeah, I really enjoyed it. And I didn't know that I was gonna like love it because I'm not a horse person. Like some people are horse people, you know, and they love horses. But reading this it made me feel like I was a horse person because you can tell Maggie Seavater is because the way she writes is just incredible. The way she writes the horses, the way she writes these characters and their love for their own horses and how they interact with them, I thought was amazing. I just love Maggie Seavater's writing style anyway. I really enjoyed both the characters. So there are two main characters in here and we follow both of them. Basically, <laughs> I've not really said anything about the plot. So there are these horses that come out of the ocean when it's winter and it's all choppy. And then the islanders, because it's set place on this island, and this is the only place where the horses come out of the water, capture the horses and then try and train them up and then they race the horses. But the horses are like pretty much untamable. They will just bite you, they'll kill you. They're, they like to, they like blood, they like killing stuff, but that's all part of the games and trying to wrangle them and make you their boss and stuff like that. So yeah, it was really interesting in that sense. But yeah, the two main characters, they were very stoic, they were very northern, I want to say. I don't even know if it counts as northern, but they just like have that aesthetic of just being like stiff upper lip. And yeah, I just really enjoyed the book and I'm so glad that I read it because the other things in this month weren't the best. So yeah, if you've not read the Scorpio races yet, definitely give it a go if you enjoy Maggie Seavater in general because this is very Maggie, the characters are great, the, the words are great, the way she describes all the stuff is great. Also, I think it's quite funny because just like the Raven Cycle, well, just like the Raven Boys, the back of this is all talking about, oh, these two, oh, even if they stay together, can they stay alive? A breathtaking ride that make your heart race. And it's like trying to make out that it's a romance, just like the Raven Boys tries to make out like, oh, true love. And I don't know who writes the Maggie as blurbs, but they try and do the books dirty. They try and make it look like a boring, generic YA romance when they're just really not ever. So yeah. Do better, blurb writer or person. Or maybe don't, maybe that's what gets the kids in these days and then they'll read the book and enjoy it anyway without all the romance. Don't get me wrong, there is some romance on here but it's not the main part. And the way it's written is good. And then last but not least, I read Jurassic Park by Michael Crichton. And this one I also really enjoyed. It's very scientific and a few people had said to me that, I feel like I've been out of focus this whole video so just deal with it. Uh, what was I saying? Yeah, a few people have said to me, or I heard people say, oh, it's not really like the film, and that is true. It's definitely got its own vibe. Obviously, it's still dinosaur -y. But I really enjoyed it. It's really cool as well, the way it's written, because there's loads of, like, scientific 
things throughout, these little graphs and tables and like the computer screen, what it would say. So it just gives you that extra little layer of stuff. Um, I'm flicking through and I can't find any just to show you. Of course, there's loads in here, but they just don't exist apparently. Oh, there we go. So for example, we have some graphs and stuff here and things. And here there's like the computer screen and stuff. So yes, I thought it was a great time. It was really interesting. Like I say, it's really scientific. It's a lot of stuff about just DNA and dinosaurs and it was interesting. I don't think I've ever read a book that has dinosaurs in it before. So that was a first. And yeah, I don't really know what to say. I, I really enjoyed it. It's just Jurassic Park, isn't it? There's a, an island and loads of dinosaurs have been created and then stuff kicks off. Pretty much. Also, if you have watched the film, Obviously there are the two kids in the film, but in the book the kids are a lot younger, so there's like a very different dynamic with them. And yeah, it's a good time. I'm glad I finally read it. So there we go, those were all the books that I read in November. I know like looking at it like that stack, it looks like quite a few, but like I said, it was just not my month. Like there was a week left and I'd read two books, so yeah and started four other ones. So yeah, let me know down below what you read in November. If you've read any of these, let me know. Say any thoughts down there and all that jazz. Leave an emoji for one of the books and I'll try and figure out which book it's for. Whatever, innit? Do it, comments on that, that's why it's there. So yeah, if this is your first video of me, you enjoy it, then please check out some of the others. And if you continue to enjoy, please subscribe, that'd be awesome. Anyway guys, I'll see you in a few days with another video.